Hello everybody, this is Graham Anderson and today I'm going to be looking at 8-Bit Attack. Now this game is inspired by the classic 8-bit side-scroller video games, games I grew up playing, but I will admit I'm getting a little tired of the 8-bit aesthetic nowadays. It's a cooperative boss rush game, that is, each round you and the other players will be working together to fight a new mini-boss and its minions until you feel you're kind of ready to fight the final boss lord. Of course, the harder the mini-bosses you select, the more rewards you're going to get to level up your characters to get them ready to face off against the final boss lord. So, in this game, you're going to be rolling dice, spending energy to use your abilities, and trying to strategically get certain enemies in front of certain heroes to, bet, to make best use of their abilities. So, did I like this game as much as I enjoy playing old school video games? Let's get it to the table, see how it's played, and I'll come back for my final thoughts on 8-Bit Attack. Here's 8-Bit Attack set up for three players. You shuffle all the enemy decks plus the champion deck. Put the final lore card on the table with the game turn track to the side with the standee on turn 1. Each player takes a hero, either pick it or randomize it, and place it with the ascended side face down. Each player takes a health token equal to their HP, and you'll place these on your heroes as you take damage. Also, take one of each of the potion tokens, and finally, each player gets two dice. The game of 8-bit attack is played over five turns. If you've not beaten the final lord by the end of the fifth turn, then your group has lost. Each turn will involve an attack, so let's go through what an attack involves. Step one is to pick the level. You choose one of the small level tokens. If you successfully defeat the level, you'll get a number of medals, which are used to upgrade your characters, equal to the level that you've chosen. But the higher the level, the more difficult they become. Once, as a group, you've decided on the level, turn over the top champion card. This will be the boss for this assault. Place the level marker so it covers up the HP on the drawn card. This could make the boss easier or harder, depending on the level you've picked. Next, you'll draw minions, allies, and other champions based on the level. A minion is drawn from the deck that matches the champion's category. You can tell the category by looking at the border around the boss picture and matching it to the back of the cards. An ally is drawn from the deck that is different from the boss's category, and a champion is of course drawn from the champion deck. These extra champions are not affected by the level you choose, so will have the HP printed on the card. If you want to, instead of going for an assault, you can decide to battle against the final lord. You do not select a level or draw a champion card, instead you will draw a number of champion cards equal to the number of players, and the final lord will have 25 hit points per player, so in our 3 player game, the final boss will have 75 hit points. Once you've decided an Assault or Final Lord, you go to Step 2, which is resetting all your heroes. Remove all damage tokens and take 4 energy tokens, and any buff or debuff tokens are also removed from the hero, so essentially you're starting from scratch fully healed. Next is Step 3, the Assigned Hero Step. All enemies must be assigned to a hero. As a group, you can decide which enemy to decide to which hero. This does not restrict the hero in any way. When the hero battles, they can attack any enemy on the table. But during the enemy's phase, the enemy will attack the hero that is assigned to. Next, we move on to step 4, which is really the heart of the assault. First, if there are any enemies that are no longer assigned, that is, the hero that they were previously attached to is KO'd, they need to be assigned to a new hero. Next, you're going to roll the tactics die. This will show you how the enemies will attack later in this step, and I'll talk about that in a bit. Next, the heroes attack. Each player will roll their two dice. This side will be a critical hit. That is, it will deal two damage, ignoring any armor that the enemy has. This is a slow hit. It will inflict one slow damage to the enemy, but the enemy's slow armor can absorb one hit. This is a fast hit. It will inflict one fast damage, and of course can be absorbed by the enemy's fast armor. And finally, this will get you one energy. Now, the heroes must decide if they want to spend energy to activate any of their abilities from their character sheet. Heroes can also use a potion now. The red potion heals the target by six points. The yellow potion immediately gives the target four energy, and the green potion will revive a KO'd hero. If you use any of the potions on yourself, it will not affect the combat. But if you use the potion on another player, that will contribute to your action and you will not be able to attack this round. If any hero's abilities grant a buff or debuff, place the appropriate card on the hero or enemy with two time tokens. Next, the hero will decide how they apply their damage. A hero can attack any enemies in play, not just the one in front of them, but a single hero's damage must be applied to a single target. When you injure an enemy, place damage markers on them. If the enemy has a if attacked line on them, then even if they are killed, they will attack back. When the heroes have finished attacking, remove all the dead enemies from the field. Next, all the remaining enemies will attack back. Each enemy will attack the hero it is assigned to. Start with one enemy and go down their entire card applying the damage from top to bottom. 
Any line with a cross sword will always trigger. All the other tactics will only trigger if it was rolled on the tactics die. If the enemy applies a debuff to a hero, place the appropriate debuff card with two timer tokens on it. Any damage is reduced by the hero's armor, if applicable, then the remainder damage is applied to the hero. Next, remove one timer from each buff or debuff card. If there are none left, discard the card. If your hero has equal or more damage tokens on them than they have max HP, then they are KO'd and cannot participate in the rest of the fight unless they are revived with a revive potion. We then check if the battle has ended. If at least one hero and at least one enemy is left, then we go back to step 4 and redo the battle sequence. Start with reassigning the enemies and roll the tactics die, etc. If no heroes are left, skip the loot stage and go directly to step 7, which is advancing the game turn. If, on the other hand, there is at least one hero and all the enemies, including the boss, are dead, then the heroes have won. If you've won, you go to the loot step, which will grant you the number of medals equal to the difficulty level for this assault. The players can decide how to split up the medals. The medals can be used to purchase potions, purchasing ruins, which will add these tokens to your player board, and will give you things like armor, more rerolls, or maybe automatic slow hits or automatic fast hits, etc. Medals can also be used to ascend a hero. It costs two medals and you flip over your player card and it will give you an extra die, a new ability, and a new trait. Then, whether you've won or lost, advance the game turn one step. If this was the end of the fifth round and you have not beaten the final lord, then you have lost the game. If you beat the final lord in the fifth turn or before, then your group has won. I'm not going to go into any details on the traits, buffs, debuffs, abilities, etc. or anything else as they're all outlined in the rulebook. So with that, let's get back to see what I thought about 8-bit attack. Let's talk about theme and components. The theme does feel like an old school boss rush game. The actions your hero does seem to be linked to what they are. I mean, the heroes seem to fall into your typical classes. You have your tank, which is going to be useful for doing lots of damage, the healer who can heal and buff other characters, and the, uh, the ranger, or ranger type of character, who can do multiple damages, poison, stealth attacks, things like that. I mean, why you're fighting these creatures is explained in the front of the rulebook, but it's kind of nowhere in the game. You're just there to fight bad guys. That's it. So onto the components themselves. The art is, well, you're either going to like the 8-bit aesthetic or you're not. Um, it fits fine with the idea that this is, you know, a recreation of an 8-bit video game, uh, but it could have easily been any other art style. The cardboard cons components like the uh, health tokens and the potions, you know what, they're decent quality and it's really nice that they give you lots of health counters. Now, these cards themselves, they have very sharp corners and they are flimsy as all get out. The information on them is easy enough to read as long as you have the rule book beside you and it's four pages of icon descriptions. The one spot I do have an issue with is determining the class of the champion. So these are the champions and there's a little board around the outside which should tell you what it is so you can pick the proper minions and allies. I don't know why they couldn't have put like a little symbol on there somewhere as it is kind of hard to differentiate when you're just looking at the border. The player match are the same qualities as these cards, very thin and flimsy. But for these, I didn't mind as much as once they're in front of you, you aren't going to be shuffling or moving them around a lot. I do like that there are lots of different characters you can pick. I think there are 20 in total. Now, the dice. I actually really like these dice. These are kind of good quality dice. and I like that each side is, you know, a nice uh, different color, easy enough to read. These are easy, the best components in the, in the box. Speaking of box, I have to comment on how much I hate this box insert. With sharp edges to the cards and no finger holes in the inserts, it's difficult to get the cards out without damaging, especially those little level cards. I don't know why you just can't put like a little finger hole. Anyway, on to the gameplay. Let me start off with the things I liked about the game. Um, uh, you know what? I thought the cooperative nature of the game was well done. You really need to be talking to other players to make sure you're all using your special abilities and potions at the right time. And who is going to attack which enemy, or should you all gang up on one enemy, is very important. And for a lightish dice game, there are kind of a number of decisions you need to be talking about. You know, who gets the upgrades? Who should be buying potions? Who should be getting runes? These are all interesting discussions to have with the other players. And things are usually not as straightforward, uh, especially with the limited resources you get, because you're only going to be getting a few medals per round. The actual gameplay of rolling the dice with very little recourse for bad rolls, I did not like at all. The abilities were interesting, but since energy seems to be always in short demand, you're going to be using your big ability maybe once or twice during an attack. You know what? It's not fun when it comes down to, oh, I rolled one slow and one fast hit. Dink! The enemy hits me for three because I have no armor. Or, oh, I rolled two energy. Maybe next round I get one more energy so I can use another one of my abilities. And the enemy hits me for three. Boy, this is fun. I'm half dead in the first two rounds. That's fun. And I think this also leads into that feeling of uselessness 
is that the game seems fundamentally unbalanced. At the higher player counts, four to five, the levels are doable, but the number of enemies that show up during the mini bosses fights do not change. If you're playing with two players and you wanna go up against a level four to five, you're gonna be fighting five to six enemies. And you're not gonna survive long with being hit for that much damage. You could be hit for five, six points around, but it's the same number as for five players. You're still gonna be fighting five to six enemies. That kind of makes no sense to me. The only card that they did seem to scale is the Final Lord. You get a champion per player and Cthulhu gets uh, 25 hit points per player. And the average champion is, let's say, 20 hit points. So if five of you go up against Cthulhu with five champions, you're gonna be need to be doing around 225 points of damage to kill everything. It is doable, but it's gonna take more than 10 rounds of combat to do it. And I just didn't feel it was that interesting and rough to really do it. Oh, and by the way, in the base box, only has one Final Lord, Cthulhu. I mean, it would have really been that hard to add a couple more. I liked getting the medals to upgrade your characters, and ascending is definitely worth it. I mean, you want to get an, a hero ascended, if possible, after the first turn. Runes are also not a bad thing to get early on. The extra abilities from your ascended definitely help, but I wasn't a big fan of the fixed runes you could buy. They're kind of printed on your player board, and those are the only ones you can purchase for one medal per rune. But I guess they couldn't be seen as thematic to the character. But when it comes right down to it, I just did not enjoy my plays of this game. Nobody I played it with enjoyed it. And usually halfway through the second fight, I can see most players were getting that little, you know, antsy feel that they were kind of done with the game, you know, kind of looking at their phone, looking at the other games that they want to play next. I think this game, if this game was better balanced and maybe more generous with rewards, so people kind of felt that their characters were getting better, people would enjoy it more. But many games we were going into, let's say, the third or fourth fight with one character who had no upgrades. That's just not, uh, that's not fun. We had probably spent the medals getting runes or ascending other heroes or restocking potions that left some players with kind of where they started. And honestly, with rolling two dice that often, it's not fun. So would I recommend this game? As you can probably tell, no, I would not. This is one I feel you can happily skip. This, to me, this game felt like it should have come out like 10 years ago. But in this day and age with all these incredible innovative games to fill you know, most people's niches, I really can't see where this one would fit in, fit in with anyone's collection. And unfortunately, that's it for the moment. Until next time, thanks for watching.